Hey everybody, welcome back this week as we continue our walk through the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Over the last several weeks, we've been talking about Christ as our Redeemer and how he uh, is in the office of a prophet, fulfills the office of a priest, and the office of a king. Uh, last week, we talked about his estate of humiliation, how he was brought into this world in a low condition, made under the law that he is God created. Um, his experiences the miseries of this life just like we do, just like humans do. The wrath of God. He experiences this wrath of God that's going to be given to the lost on the final day of judgment. Even cur the cursed death on the cross. He died on the cross for us and then remained in this condition of death under the, under the power of death for a time. And that brings us to this week, which is the estate of exaltation. This estate of humiliation wasn't it. He's in, he has this state of exaltation, which brings us to question 28, which is, wherein consisteth Christ's exaltation? Christ's exaltation consisteth in his rising again from the dead on the third day, in ascending up into heaven, in sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and in coming to judge the world at the last day. So rising again, so Christ in his exaltation, he rose from the dead on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 4 tells us that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Well, if it's within accordance with the scriptures, then without a doubt, it has to be true. It has to be true. We learn this in the answer to question three, where it says the word of God is contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. It's the only rule to direct us. But you may be asking yourself, well, where do I find this? Where do I see the words, Christ will rise from the dead on the third day? I would encourage you to look at this in the sense of God doing miraculous things on the third day rather than a physical phrase. So we think about this. The resurrection happened on the third day. God does miraculous works on the third day. And if we look at it this way, we will see that pattern through Scripture. Uh, one of them I mentioned last week in our in our uh, video was Matthew 12, verse 40. It says, For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. <clears throat> So this, is, this reference is from the New Testament, but you can go back to the Old Testament of Jonah and see this. Uh, Jonah was spit out of the fish on the third day. Christ was raised from the dead on the third day. Miraculous things happening on the third day. Jonah became a sign for Nineveh in that time. When he, was, he came out of the fish, he became a sign of Nineveh. Jesus became a sign for his generation. Another example we could look at that's maybe familiar with us is the story of Abraham and Isaac. Uh, in Genesis, Genesis 22, first two verses, it says, After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Now, two verses later in verse four, it says, on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. <clears throat> so this place on the third day, Abraham sets up this altar. He places the wood. He places Isaac on, on this altar, even raises a knife to kill him. And then an angel spoke to him, telling him to stop. And God provided a ram in the bushes, stuck by his horns. So God does great things on the third day. And that's how we should look at this here. Now, not only was Christ raised from the dead on the third day, but he ascended up into heaven. Acts 1 verse 9 tells us, And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Now, this was an actual event. This was an event in history where Christ's flesh and bones with the holes in his hands, his pierced side, were lifted up out of their sight. And where did he go? He went to heaven. 
but he sits on the right hand of God the Father. We see in Ephesians verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 20, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Christ being set at his right hand is being set in a great place of honor. Uh, it's not a literal seat as God is a spirit. God does not have a physical body. Christ is that body. Christ is God. He is fully God and he is fully man. And in this place, this place of honor, uh, Christ must be given all the honor that also belongs to God. And in this place of honor, he, he won't remain there forever. He will come to judge the world at the last day. We see in Acts 1 verse 11, This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And then in Acts 17, verse 31, it says, Because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he was given assurance to all by raising from him from the dead. So there's a fixed day, a fixed day. Um, but we shouldn't be worried about that day. As it says in Matthew 24, verse 36, But concerning the day and the hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. So we shouldn't be worried about when is this fixed time. This, this, Our focus should be on God and on glorifying Him in our daily lives. We shouldn't be seeing, do I have enough time to get ready? Well, maybe I can procrastinate and wait a few more weeks if He's not coming till the end of the year or, or something like that. We should always be prepared. God wants us to be looking at him at all times, glorifying him in all things, in all of all our lives, in our daily lives. Um, now, when Christ does return, it will be a clear knowledge of his return. And on that day, there will be two people. There will be the saved, which will experience God's glory, and there will be the lost, which will experience God's wrath. As we said last week, in that place of the, of the lost, in that place of God's wrath, um, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So our focus should always be on God and on glorifying him. Let his light shine through you. Let his light shine through you to those around us. Tell others about this, this Christ, about this, this light, um, th so that they may be saved to those people that you talk to. So this week's answer Christ's exaltation consisteth in his rising from the dead on the third day, in ascending up into heaven, in sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and in coming to judge the world at the last day.